Um, welcome to part one of Z-Sphere Ringing. Uh, we'll be going through just doing a Z-Sphere Rig with a single subtool. I'd like to thank Carolyn Deline for this model that I'll be using through these videos, which will be multiple parts. So the first thing um, I want to do is just looking at a single model, which is her body, turning on solo mode so I can look at it, seeing how many subdivision levels there are in this particular model and looking at the sculpted detail because we want to be able to pose uh, this character and bring all this sculpted detail onto the pose. So I'm going to show you in a way that you can pose a singular subtool which has multiple subdivision levels with a lot of sculptural detail on it. So the first thing we'll do is we'll drop down to our lowest subdivision level. We'll go up into the tool palette and click on a Z-Sphere. Z-Sphere is what we're going to be using to create a rig. So if you notice in the rigging, rigging sub palette, I'll select the mesh, which is the woman body of my character. Now solo mode is on, so I'll need to turn that off so I can actually see a ghosted image of her. I don't want to see a ghosted image of her, so I'm going to turn transparency on and then turn off ghost. Now when creating a uh, Z-Sphere rig, I always turn on um, symmetry mode. As you can see, both dots are on. That way, when I start moving things or drawing things out, I know I'm making a symmetrical rig. Because the minute I come out of sy symmetry mode, um, the Z-sphere will go off into a distance like I just did in order to, uh, which would cause major issues. So I'm just lining up, and I'm going to use this first Z-sphere as her pelvic bone. And this is always what I use for the root Z-sphere for myself. So I'm now going to make sure I am in move mode. I'm going to make sure I select the Z-sphere. And that I know by is it's got the red circle, and when I scroll over, it's got the big green circle. Now switching to draw mode, I can clearly just start clicking on points of my mesh, and I'll begin to draw out my Z-sphere rig. Now, the, the keep in mind for this, uh, you can switch angles and views. Um, this might take a little bit of practice, but this is definitely the easiest way to create a rig. I'm just using the actual physical mesh and drawing out my points. Now I'll switch to move again, and now just move my rig into a position that's more like a bone structure inside the body. Because when I'm drawing out the Z-spheres, ZBrush is just clicking on the first point that it sees, which in this happens to be the front of the knee, the front of the leg, so I need to actually put it in to where the hip is going to be. And uh, I'm, I like to move my uh, joint down a little bit at the hip, and you'll see why later in the video what I also like to add are caps at certain parts. So the first thing is just to get a base general rig um, set up for my character so that when I go to actually move them, I'm actually going to be able to have a lot of motion in within the actual rig. So now again, I'm switching back to move so I can actually select that root again because now we need to do the upper part of the body. So I know that Z-Sphere is selected now. It's got the big red circle around it. I'm going to switch to draw and I'm just going to start drawing out to go to my shoulders. Now I found that making a Y shape, so I'm making a Y I'm more going into the middle of the chest and then out to the shoulders has tended to give me a better movement within my rig. So now I'm doing the same thing along as I did with my legs. I'm selecting the points. I'm not going to worry about the fingers. I personally prefer to use the transpose movements for when I'm going to do the fingers. So I like to use my rig to make some real major movements, which this is going to be so easily and freely able to be able to done inside ZBrush now. So I'm just moving around my Z-spheres into position. We're going to move that into the middle of the chest. So now I have, from the, in essence, from the shoulders down of a rig. So I'm just tweaking the movement where I want the Z-spheres to actually sit. So the more Z-spheres I have, the more dynamic you can start getting with an actual pose. So it's also good sometimes to draw, make your draw size 1. Um, so that you can have an easier capability of grabbing certain z-spheres. So now I'm just drawing onto the neck and to the head of my z-spheres. So now that I have that drawing out, again, I'm going to need to switch to the move and move that neck portion into position and into place. So of course I'm going to make blend shapes that will make my expression movements. I wouldn't use the z-sphere rig to do that. So now I have a basic actual rig completed um, for her, but I need to go in and add more definitive points of where we're going to have movement. So again, I, I discussed caps, so I'm now adding a cap to make actually a better point where the hip would actually be close to the greater canter 
as well. So I'm also going to add caps right below um, the secondary point, and then I'm going to do the same thing above my knee and below my knee. Um, I found along the ankle and the foot this gives me enough movement, but of course every character is different, so you'll want to you know, investigate and try out a couple of things. And that's also the beauty of rigging. I'm going to be able to add some z-spheres and give it a test and see what it's looking like. So it's always beneficial also to put at least, I usually put at least two rib joints for my ribs so the little portion of the body in the middle of the torso doesn't move when I start moving the arms. So what I'm doing right now is adding some uh, rib joint right above the pelvic bone so I have a better movement in there. And then I'm going to move up the body and seeing that I'm doing a women I need to add some uh, z-spheres for her breasts so that they can move as well and then that also gives me the control to be able to move that individual portion of the body so that's all I'm doing right now is the same thing with the rib is adding now a, a portion to control the upper part of the torso and then also have control over her um, her chest area so this is key to obviously test and trial area. This is not by any means a perfect, this is going to work with every single character, but once you have a base, like I'm making for her for a human character, I can essence any other human character, I could bring in this rig and use it on relatively any human character with some tweaking and adding of some z-spheres. So I'm going to again add a cap to my shoulders. This will help me get some really good shoulder shrugging that I would be looking to do and then uh, again adding another cap on the other side and I'm going to do the same thing for the elbow so now I have caps on the elbow and the shoulders and then I need to take a look at the neck because it will definitely be more movement in the neck than what we have so I'm going to add a couple z-spheres for the neck so we have now three z-spheres added for the neck and of course I made a z-sphere at the base of where the head and the neck meet and there we have a base z-sphere. Now that we have our base z-sphere, we need to look at how to transfer the sculpted detail onto something that's rigged. So before we do anything, the first step we need to do is bind the mesh. So we're going to bind now the rig that we just made to the character. The second thing we need to do is taking a look at back to the original sculpt of her and looking at just her body and seeing what sculptural detail we have. So again I'm in solo mode going up to subdivision level 5 seeing what kind of sculptural detail we have of her. Then I'm going to go back to my rig, take myself out of solo mode and I need this sculptural detail to advance so it's key to make sure that you have a bind first. Second step is change my density to match the same as subdivision levels which is 5. I'm going to hold shift and click on preview which is step number 3 and step number 4 is touch the mesh while it's in this preview mode at least once and now when I come out of preview mode I now have just bounded this rig to a sculpted mesh. So now when I start switching to things like rotate and move, I can start clicking on the chains and start moving my mesh around. So the chain is the what's between sub Z spheres. So right now there is a selected Z sphere and I'm rotating the actual Z sphere itself, but you can also rotate the chain. Now if you do an undo, you will see your rig snap, but your mesh will not follow. Don't worry, all you have to do is select, click on the rig again, and then your mesh will snap back to it. So right now I'm testing and looking at my pelvic area and seeing if I want to add some more z-spheres, which from the movement I'm looking at, I'm getting a little too much stretch. So I'm going to undo again and click anywhere on my rig and it'll snap back. So I'm going to unbind this and I'm going to start adding some z-spheres around the pelvic area to give myself some more movement. So again I'm switching to move mode so I can select that pelvic or that root z-sphere. Then I'm going to switch to draw mode and draw out in the front of my pelvic so I can have some more stability and movement there. Then I'm going to look to her back. 
So again, this is going to be different for every mesh, and it's experimenting. So I just experimented with my rig and found that I needed to add some more Z-spheres in the rear and in the front of my pelvic bone to have some better movement. So I found for this particular mesh, I like to add not just one chain off to the rear of the pelvic bone, but I actually add two. That's also going to give me more movement within um, the buttocks region of the character. So now it's just tweaking and putting where I would like to actually put these z-spheres themselves. Again, the more z-spheres I add, the more controls I'm going to have, but you also want to use the z-spheres sparingly. You don't want to add too much, and then your movements uh, are not smooth and quick. So there's obviously a give and take to where you want to put z-spheres. So I found for this particular mesh, adding a z-sphere in the front of the, of the pelvic and adding some z-spheres in the back was a great movement. So I'm going to go ahead and test this now, put myself back in bind mode. Now I've added z-spheres. So again, I'm at density 5 to match the subdivision level. I hold shift, click on preview, and I just clicked on my actual mesh with the brush to make sure that ZBrush sees that there is a mesh there and a difference uh, being done when it is, is put in preview mode. So now you can see I have a better movement when I start rotating from my hip the inner portion of the leg isn't moving as much and then my buttocks region I can actually click now on these z-spheres switch to move mode and actually start playing with even the shape so besides just using the z-sphere rigging to rig a character movement you can see how you can start using even a rig to start doing some major sculptural changes so again I'm undoing um, my rig and just doing some testing so again once you undo you'll see your rig snap but the mesh won't once you click on your rig again your mesh will completely snap so I'm testing my shoulder shrug now on my character and this is another reason why I added those caps on the shoulder to give me a little more movement there a little more freedom so again you can either click on an actual z-sphere in either one of the modes which the most popular mode I will use is rotate or the z-sphere itself. Now when you have symmetry mode on you're only going to get on front and back movement of the body so in order to get a full movement I'm going to take symmetry mode off so I can literally rotate her head around like the head our head actually rotates. So again that movement will allow me also to rotate within the body and get a more asymmetrical pose and rotation. So now that I'm out of symmetry mode, I can start playing with testing my actual rig and putting her in some kind of pose to see if I am getting the results that I want. So again, I'm just clicking on the actual chains themselves. So you can click on either the Z-sphere, which is highlighted in red, or the chain, which is highlighted in a white triangle. So I'm clicking on the actual chain for most of these movements um, to have a little difference in her step. So it's really quick, it's really free, it's really easy, and it's something that once you get the grasp of and you really start to learn how to build a rig for your characters, you're going to be able to create some really dynamic poses, quick, efficiently, and um, in a manner that is more artistic. So once we have some last bit movements and some adjustments in here, maybe pushing her head down, looking at her hand, and you can see how extreme you can get by selecting just a z-sphere and not just a chain. And now I have her head looking downward and we'll add a little tilt as well to it using the chain of z-spheres. And now we're gonna hold A, click on A to take now, you will see the pose and now you'll have your sculpture detail from the character being transferred actually to her pose from the steps that we previously did. And this is how you take a single subtool mesh sculpted detail onto a rig. So this concludes part one of Z-Sphere rigging with just a single subtool.